So let's talk about why to study machine learning. And I will give you a few possible answers. Of course, this is more a rhetoric question you you understand. But uh, well, why would why would anyone be interested in studying machine learning at all? So let's start with a philosophical reason. Just something slow. Contemplate. Imagine the scale of our universe. And imagine uh, a model where the moon is just this pixel on the screen. So one pixel is the diameter of the moon. And then this is your scale. This is uh, 100,000 kilometers and this is 1 million kilometers. Let's start. Well, universe is too large, right? And all that we see how humans uh, travel to distant galaxies every day on Netflix. This is just a show, just a dream. So let's look at reality. Let's look just at our solar system. This is the nearest star that we know, our sun. If we start at the sun and travel from the sun, uh, okay, uh, let's see if I'd be able to do it. And travel from the sun at the speed of light. This is the speed of light. Uh, it's the fastest speed allowed by the universe. So I'm not, well, the point being here, if we sit here and stare at it for quite a while, this is the fastest speed we can go in the universe. Then, eventually, we will, well, skip to Mercury. Eventually, in 3.3 minutes, we will arrive at the speck, which is almost the size of the moon, which is called Mercury. Notice nothing in between, just emptiness. We can go to Venus and that will take light six minutes. We can go to Earth about eight minutes, right, from the sun. And here's our moon, uh, just a single pixel. So if we again want to start, uh, travel at the speed of light, that could take forever. The point I'm trying to make, and um, all my slides will be available somehow, either as uh, live presentations, um, live slides, JavaScript, or PDF, um, but you will be able to explore the simulator yourself. So the point I'm trying to make is our universe is quite empty, and if we don't invent uh, some radically new physics, which is uh, which at least from an uh, uh, immediate nearsighted perspective seems unlikely, then travel to even distant or nearest planets, well, Mars is okay, uh, but thinking about uh, further planets in our universe or in our solar system is unlikely. Uh, our human bodies, we're just not made for this vast space and uh, boring travel. Um, this, uh, you know, hibernation and um, all of that stuff, maybe. But it's way, way easier and cheaper and uh, sensible and not that cruel to send machines to explore the universe. And we cannot send our current machines, we need smart machines, we need artificial intelligence. We should need machines that learn. And to be able to build machines that learn, we need to study the discipline of machine learning because we need to understand and to know how machines learn. That's one of the reasons, that's kind of a philosophical one, why to have that discipline at all. There is also a pragmatic reason, and this is from something that we do at the Trend Center. So we want uh, to collect a lot of data about um, our surroundings. If you don't want to go to space, if you don't think this is the ultimate frontier, 
all right, this if you don't share that goal with me, fine. Well, I hope you want to be healthy and you want um, other humans to be healthy. So we want uh, to collect a lot of data or collect some data uh, non-invasively without cutting ourselves um, up open in order to understand what, ha what is happening with disease, right? So our usual answer to questions like that is, um, well, we'll just, let's collect more data and more data so we understand more and more and more. And uh, at some point the data becomes uh, so large that it becomes a problem itself because high dimensional data is not easy to see through. Yes, we can collect everything, and then what? Um, how do we make inferences? How do we may, uh, find the physical or biological laws hidden in the, in the data? By analyzing the data, but it's just vast amounts. Uh, well, wouldn't it be nice if we have uh, a helper, uh, something or someone who automatically extracts the meaning from all of the data? Yeah. That would be our machine learning solution, right? Our, uh, again, artificial intelligence robot that learns, that extracts this from the data, but that ultimately we could have intermediate results with algorithms that extract that meaning. That's another reason to study machine learning. What else? Uh, well, if you are not inspired by this too, well, think about how the world views it. Look at those headlines from the top serious uh, publications in the world. We, oh, AI is taking away our jobs. AI expert says automation could replace 40% of jobs in 15 years. Replaced by robots, 10 jobs that could be hit hard by AI revolution. Over 30 million US workers will lose their jobs because of AI. Oh, scary, right? What will happen? Will like will the businesses just get rid of people and automate AI, or we want um, helpers? We want robots to do the work. We want to automate the factories. We want self-driving cars, don't we? Well, but at the same time, there is a fear that uh, we will lose our jobs. Well, fear not. Uh, because, um, oh, let, me, let me tell about it a little bit. So, uh, the media is full of the crazy, uh, from my point of view, crazy fears of uh, artificial intelligence taking over the world as if we already had any anywhere close to artificial intelligence. Right, so looking at these headlines, artificial intelligence as a threat, why we should think about the threat of artificial intelligence, and all of those serious, uh, serious uh, media uh, shops, wow, those are uh, serious pub publishers. And yet, uh, that's what we're afraid of. The robots are taking over the world, Skynet all the way. Well, uh, Jokes aside, what actually those people are telling about is interesting, philosophically speaking. So philosophically, uh, to explain, if you don't know yet, what people are afraid of, or, or kind of uh, the kind of argument that they make is the paperclip ar argument. Imagine that we don't yet have artificial intelligence or um, artificial general intelligence, AGI is not there. But we just build very powerful, very smart algorithms to achieve the goals that we set for them. So this algorithm, imagine the paperclip algorithm or paperclip problem. I think uh, that's due to Nick Ballstrom, but uh, the philosopher, uh, but uh, I could be wrong uh, attributing it uh, to him. The, the, imagine this thought experiment, hypothetical. We have a powerful algorithm that will do what, or algorithm, or robot, or um, device uh, that tells um, or does precisely what it's being told, and we tell it to make paper clips. 
So it starts making paper clips, and in the process, it optimizes everything to make paper clips. So it takes over the world, amasses all the resources, starts spending all the resources uh, for the paper clips because that's the ultimate goal. That's the best thing to do, and then eventually it decides that humans are in the way of making uh, good paper clips, and because it's such a powerful algorithm, it just destroys all the humans. Yeah, all the stories. Um, I I I hope you get it. Um, that you know, it could be at any other level if there is a power, powerful algorithm, essentially an algorithm or powerful entity that we create that has goals that are different or not aligned with our goals, then we should be fearful that it will accidentally eliminate us by trying to sell their goals. It's not that it has to be malicious or something, but. Um, where, like, why are we talking about it at all? Uh, shall we be afraid of losing our jobs? Well, I personally think that uh, new jobs will be created. It is like uh, Luddites uh, back in, the, in uh, Britain in Industrial Revolution times were uh, afraid of automation taking away, away like the, the looms were taking away their manual labor. Uh, feeling the progress is like that. It's being fearful of uh, better times, uh, more more um, abundant future, uh, where the jobs are just different, right? But that's uh, again my opinion.